which is centered in Riverside County. He's also a candidate for the Board of Trustees of Riverside's Community College District. And I want to speak with you about that first before we talk about K-12. Thank you. You may have heard that the Community College District statewide, you know, the, the big kahuna, the one who oversees yes. 112 community colleges, the system is looking at whether California's community colleges should be permitted to grant four-year degrees. What do you think of that? I, I think it's about time. Really? Um, if you look back, the 1960 plan that kind of designed right. the model of what California's community higher education was supposed to do, I think it was appropriate for that time. But as our economy continues to get worse and you look at how much it costs to go to a UC or even a Cal State, thousand dollars you know for every year to get your four-year degree at a community college is exceptional I think it's got to be very limited to what areas we look at and, and let's talk about that because I know for example Michigan recently right. uh, uh, allowed its system to grant four-year degrees but they did limit it to specific areas uh, I believe there were limits nursing, nursing automotive biotech uh, what's your sense of whether I think you said it there should be limits I, on I, the I types think of to degrees. start I think you know you look at um, with the med school um, right. at UCR, UCR. Right. so I think the nursing program will be excellent. We have a culinary program at RCC, and so taking that and expanding that from a two-year program to mm -hmm. a four-year program, I, I've got a daughter that's interested yes. in culinary arts, so as I think about instead of spending $65,000, you could spend $4,000 and or even $7,000 and get that culinary degree and do it here right locally. And I think about more rural areas of California. You know, obviously here in Riverside, there's UCR, there's La Sierra, CBU. Cal Baptist, and so there are four-year institutions. But if you go to some rural areas of California, the community college is the only higher education institution within hours. Right. And so these folks may not even have the opportunity to get a bachelor's because for whatever reason, they can't move. Right. And it's about economics. I mean, we know that you're going to make, uh, the average person makes, was it, $1.4 million over their lifetime if they get a college degree. And so I think that anything we can do to ensure that um, our students have the best education possible and that education helps them get out of poverty. And so that's what we should be doing. And I think, you know, Bryce Harris is a... He's the chairman of the... Uh, community college here in California. And that task we're just looking at now, I think the community colleges board should be really taking an active and proactive stance and pushing that message up to uh, to the rest of the community. I was actually shocked that. when I read that 21 states allow their community colleges to offer some form of bachelor degree. Now, you may know this, but a couple of years ago, uh, Senator Block out of San Diego, mm -hmm. he proposed uh, changing the legislation to allow that this type of structure right. but it ultimately died I wonder if the momentum has shifted I think people are afraid of competition and that's oh, really what it's about right. I mean think of the tech schools that are out there that are taking away from the community college the community college does it it costs four thousand there as I mentioned I think schools like AI and um, which is a great culinary program but right. it's you know, probably thirty five thousand dollars for t to graduate there from a two-year program so I think we've got an opportunity now. Um, the culinary program at, at RCC is really a great program, and to take that and be able to expand that and expand our nursing program. Well, I think about nursing specifically that's, that's because amazing. we know that there is a dearth of nurses in California. We need nurses. It's just that simple. Biggest shortage. And, and with the Affordable Care Act coming online, we really need nurses because they'll be kind of the front line for many seeking primary care. So what do you think? you think it can happen? you think it will happen? I think if there's enough momentum and noise about it, I think, it could happen, I think, using the other states as models. I know there's some partnerships happening, like in Orange County. Right. CSUN, I know. Uh, no, CSU LA has a partnership with, I think, College of the Canyons. I mean, there are some partnerships kind of floating around. But we need our own. We're actually right. doing, it our, doing ourselves. And I, th I think it will, as long as people are aware of it and they understand that we're not the first. But what about the accreditation issues? Because obviously that changes. Because the community college accreditation is different than a four year sure. accreditation. How would that look? I think we've got enough examples out there where we can right. actually do it and, and I think as long as you look at the, the, the people that are at the community colleges now you're gonna have to hire more and different people to do that but there's a lot of people out there I think that would be especially in the nursing program there's a lot what of about people fee structure should there be a different fee structure for those getting a four-year degree um, I know there's this thought about you know a multi-tiered system for right. the community college you know, I could see for the second and third year it being maybe half of what you would pay right. at, at a Cal State, not the same as for the, for the associate's degree, right. but I still think it needs to be more affordable than what right. you would pay at a, at a Cal State. That's ultimately the goal. The point right. is to try to make it affordable because you know, even though UC and CSU are less expensive They're than expensive. some of their counterparts in other states, 
and definitely less expensive than private institutions, it's still I mean, $12,000 a year for a UC, and that doesn't include Anything a else. room board. I mean, it, it's pricey. It's, it's too expensive. Let, let's go back and talk about K-12. What a difference a year makes. I mean, if we were talking last year, let's say 15, 16 months ago, Prop 30 didn't like it, look like it was going to pass. It has passed. The economy is turning around. Give me a sense, sir, of how K-12 is looking 2013-2014. Well, uh, this may sound strange, but yeah. because of the local control funding, right, that's a separate issue, right? Right. The, the more issues you have, the, the better you're going to you're, you're right. going to do. So, um, you know, with Prop 30, it didn't give us any new money; it just stopped the bleeding. Right. And so we're able to look and see who can we bring back to the classrooms, not only at the classrooms but our other support services, which is essential to every one of our employees is, is critical for our so, students to have the best education. And let's talk about LCFF, the local control funding formula. That really is a revolution in yes. how f uh, education is funded in California. Instead of the categoricals, what we see is money is given to school districts as a base grant, but if the school hmm. district educates disadvantaged students, ESL, economically disadvantaged foster kids, they get a bump per student, and then if there is a, right, <laughs> if you educate more than 55% in those categories, you get a big bump. It's a huge bump. 50%. Yeah, and, and so, as the kind of was leading, as I said right. before, we're, we're blessed in one way because now, and we know it's not all about money. Right. Money doesn't solve all our ills, but it does require different resources and support to help those students that fit in those categories. So, Alvar does fall into the concentration grant. You yeah. do have 55% above. We do. And, and we're already looking at now, how do we take and move Alvor to the next level? And we're looking at creative programs, we're looking at models that they've done in other areas, but it really is about hiring people and making sure. Well, it's interesting, I'm wondering if there's a counter incentive, because you want that extra money, and so you want to classify these kids as, dis as disadvantaged, as English language learners. If all of a sudden, wow. you know, you, you pull them out of the ESL categories, I mean, I guess you don't have a say as to whether someone's disadvantaged or not economically, but it is something I thought about. Well, I think what we want to do is what's best for students. Right. And so uh, I look at um, where do we want to have our children, children to be. Mm -hmm. and, and so our dropouts rates are still low. And we know that in order to uh, approach those students that are disadvantaged or the students that are ELL, right. um, but to me, it's all about economics. I want to ask you about Common Core. Okay. That is also in the background. I mean, so much going on. LCFF, Common Core. How is Alvar doing with the adoption of these new Common Core standards, which really is changing the way children are educated, not as focused on kind of the standardized, bubbleized testing model, but the more, uh, you know, dig deeper, maybe fewer subjects, yeah. but dig deeper. Yeah, yeah not right. as why, but right. deeper, going deeper. Right. Um, our, our teachers are have been wonderful about the process. Mm -hmm. They they have um, a little concern about what, what things are going to look like in the timelines, but we've already started some um, uh, programs to help provide additional resources for our staffs. I know the We're, state had actually offered up a billion point two five to school districts to help implement Common Core. Yeah. Has that money flowed? Well, we know it's coming. It's coming, so, okay. So we're prepared for that, and we've already started some implementation programs. We've already kind of redesigned our report cards to reflect that. I think we probably need to go back and make our report okay. simpler, but, but what we're trying to do is talk to parents about here's what your child should learn and have simple communication with them about what they can expect from them. And I think we're moving in the right direction. I'm thrilled with Common Core. I, I think have you received pushback? I, I had one parent call me about saying I'm concerned what this means and mm. my, my feedback to her is in California we're, we're dead last. Mm. Can't so, get much worse. Yeah, so what why can't we do something now to say we want to at least be competitive, not only at our sisters and brothers just across the state, right. but when your child goes to college, they're competing with people in other states that are doing better than we right. are. And we think about the tri-state area, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. It's I mean, those schools are just un off the chart. Unbelievable. They're off and, the chart. And then we're still competing nationally, too. You. His name is Ben Johnson. He is the vice president of the Albert School Board, also a candidate for Riverside Community College District. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We thank you so much for watching Charter, California Edition.